All right. <laughs> Thanks, June. All right. Yeah. So, uh, like June said, um, I am Nick Adams. Um, I live in Rochester, New York. I'm originally from Connecticut, um, and for a while I was in London, Ontario. Um, I know a couple of London people here. Um, <laughs> And uh, so I am the COO at WP Buffs. Um, and so what we do is WordPress maintenance and support. We're a 24 seven team. We've got people um, on five different continents all around the world. So we're literally 24 um, seven. We cover every single time zone. And that's our website, wpbuffs.com. Also, most importantly, I like to really have a roller coaster. So I really want to like start this thing off by really just losing every single person here. <laughs> and then winning everyone back by admitting that being a Bruins fan because I'm from New England does mean that I am uh, like a Bruins fan because the Whalers left. And uh, for some reason it's not advancing. But I'm also a Raptors fan. So I think I just want everyone back. Um, and about to win the Stanley Cup and about to win the NBA championship. So, totally true. Um, pretty sweet that both teams that I love are in the finals. Um, so, that is it about me. Um, so, today I'm talking about uh, local WordPress development. And uh, so, there are a lot of great reasons to do that. Um, the most obvious one that I find is. Um, you don't need internet access. I'm someone who, I'm all over the place. Um, I like to go to the beach, I like to um, like travel a lot, and so one of the things with that is like you don't always have internet access. Even like with uh, like a, having your own personal hotspot on your phone, those are so unreliable sometimes that like, you know, you're fine and then all of a sudden you lose it. So I love being able to work anywhere um, and just like develop sites without needing internet access. Um, you have control over the server. That's one of the things that I absolutely love as well, um, especially because um, there are several great hosting companies out there, but no hosting company ever promises you 100% uptime, and that's on purpose. Um, that's because nobody can promise that with uh, an online server. There's just too many factors, and so, um, I'm guessing probably this has happened to several people where you're working on a website and you're like, you, you're on a deadline and all of a sudden there's just like an issue, like PHP stops working and so it just like is giving you errors. It says like the PHP module isn't running. Um, whereas like when you're working locally, you don't have to rely on that other host to make sure that your site is running, to make sure that it's running properly. Um, you have full control over the server. And then security. Um, if your website, that while you're working on it, is only accessible on your computer, there's pretty much no chance that anyone can hack in unless you know they're sitting right next to you and hopefully you notice them touching your keyboard. Um, <laughs> if you see someone doing that, it's usually a security threat um, <laughs> for, for so many reasons. Um, yeah, yeah, cats. Cats are the ones who can break this rule. Um, but yeah, so security, for real, when you're developing a site, um, you may, especially if you're writing plugins or something, um, you really don't want that to be accessible to, um, to the world until you're done with it because you want to be able to test it for security. You don't want to have like security flaws sitting on this live site while you're developing it. Um, and that happens a lot. There are bots that can actually like scan when, as soon as a website is launched, like they can find it and they will immediately try hacking it, especially because at the beginning of a new website is a lot of times when they're most vulnerable. Uh, especially if you install WordPress but don't set it up, they can actually just set up their own site on your server. Um, so working locally is just awesome for security. Uh, you have direct access to the files. Uh, this is fantastic for development, especially if you're editing a lot of files. You can just like open up several files in um, in whatever IDE or code editor you're using, and you can just edit them and save them and rename them as much as you want without having to worry about sending back and forth between the server. 
Um, that especially, again, falls back onto you, you want something you can rely on and that you have control over. And if you're relying on your development sending files back and forth to the server, the second that there's even like a mild interruption at the server, all of a sudden you can't push to live. And so uh, you just end up with delays. I think the remote just died. Um, there's also server caching. Anyone who has ever worked on a live server, um, especially depending on which one you're on, uh, SiteGround is one that's known for this. They have fantastic server caching. The problem is, if you're trying to edit a site on that, you have to like clear like four caches before you're sure that you've cleared all of it. And so you can like make a change and then refresh, and then the change hasn't happened. So then you clear like one of the caches and the change still hasn't happened. Then you go and you clear a different cache, and then finally you see your change. Um, whereas when you're lo working locally, um, unless you have put caching on there, there's not going to be server caching. You don't really need it when you're working locally anyway. And so um, that's just fantastic, because every time you change it, you can change one line in a file, click Save, and immediately refresh your page, and your updates are on there. So that's just the reasons for why to work locally. Um, I highly encourage it for everyone. Um, and so in this talk, I'm also going to be showing just how easy it is to work locally. So if you've always heard about people saying like, oh, I build websites locally, but on my own local server, that sounds like something that may be very complicated. Um, but it's actually really easy. Like, it's no different than using like Microsoft Word. Um, so just a couple of best practices things i like to point out, um, one of the big ones is naming file versions. Um, this one's really important just because if you're um, consistently editing files and then you need to go back, um, you know, this is the same for online, but it's, it's easier to do when you're working locally because you can so rapidly just like edit, save, edit, save, edit, save. Then you find out that you accidentally overwrote something or um, made a change you didn't mean to change. Um, so one of the things I always recommend is whenever you're doing it, it gets a little crazy if you're making a lot of changes. Um, but anytime you're making real changes beyond just like changing a color here or there, um, especially if you're working on like functions, if you're changing function names or anything like that, or using different using new filters, um, I always rename the file. Um, and so like I have my style.css, which is like my actual active one. But like if you go into a site that I've worked on, um, you'll see like style like only on my local server. I don't push this to live, um, but I've got like style version two, style version 236. Um, and I do that, and so I actually show that too. Like use as many as you need to. You know, if you need to get all the way up to um, up to version 10, if you need to get all the way up to 100, version 100, um, when you're working locally, I mean, these files are tiny. They aren't going to slow down your site because you've got, you know, like a whole bunch of like 50 kilobyte files. It's going to take a lot of files for that to actually add up, like thousands and thousands of them. So um, don't be afraid to just keep renaming files so that you have backups of everything you do. Yeah, you have a question? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you can change the, the file type so that it doesn't you know, show up. Because if you are editing like PHP files, that is one of those things. Um, if you aren't aware, any PHP files in, um, you know, in a plugin are, are active as long as the plugin is active. So you don't want to have excess files. Um, but yeah, so whatever naming convention works best for you. Um, the, the most important thing here is just make sure you have one that's written out and make sure that it's one that you can understand so that way you can remember you know, that you had this version and it worked on this version and then you remember like, oh, I, you know, now I'm on version 13 and it doesn't work so I need to go back to version 10 and look to see what my changes are. Um, 
So yeah, whatever naming convention works best for you is definitely a good way to go. Yeah? Uh, so Git is definitely another option. Um, I I do love using Git, especially when I'm working on like more like on a, an actual development server. Um, so I don't if I'm using Git, I don't actually use like this naming convention. If I'm using Git, then I'm just you know I'm using branches, and um, this is more so like if I'm just like editing a file real quick, um, which is more so I don't use Git usually when I'm um, like when I'm developing the whole thing locally, that's I more so use Git when like I'm editing a file locally and then pushing it back to the the development server through Git. Um, but definitely, if you're using it locally, just use the the standard Git convention of branches and and core. I found Git almost never worked on production servers, and that's for the most common time you have to do Yeah. And you don't have time or even the ability to move it to your local server or wherever you've got to do it on production, then make sure that you really do have a copy of the file back down. Oh yeah, yeah, you always want to make sure you have backups if Git isn't working for you. Um, then for sure. One of the other things is when you're working locally, if you have a live version of your website, um, you want to make sure that you're syncing the live version with the local version. One thing that I've seen go wrong so many times when people are working on a site locally is they copy down the live version to their local and then they work on it for a few weeks and then they're like, okay, well, how do I push my changes back? Now, if you're using something like Git, that's an option, but if you are just editing a site, you don't want to make a whole bunch of changes over a long period of time and then have your live version of your website become completely out of sync. Um, and I've seen that several times where they say, well, I've made all these changes to the live site while someone else was working on the local site or I was making these changes on local and these ones on live and now they're completely incompatible. There are a few plugins that can help with that. Um, like there's a site sync plugin. Um, there's Migrate DB Pro that can help with stuff like that. Um, so that way any content changes on live can be synced back and forth. Um, what I like to do really is um, my best practice is if I'm working on changes to a live site locally, um, I personally pretty much only do that for a certain period of time. So like if I'm um, changing the theme, like if I'm making major theme edits and I want to work on it locally, I'll pull it down, make no changes to live, and then push it back up as soon as I'm ready. Um, but then I also, if I do need to work on it for longer periods of time, and I'm working on several parts, especially if it involves changes to content, um, that's where having a sync plugin is, is fantastic. Um, because that way, whatever changes is, are on live um, get synced right back. So if somebody adds a page, it goes on there. Somebody changes a page or like some of the content, it goes on to your uh, local server. And as long as you've got the plugin running in both places, um, that can really save that issue. Um, but that is that's one of the biggest pitfalls that I see with people working locally is if they, you know, have a lot of changes happen. Yes. Uh, yeah, I like SiteSync by uh, ServerPress. It's a, a good plugin. They they keep releasing updated versions, um, and they actually are the ones who make one of the uh, local development um, softwares software pieces that I'm um, that I'm going to be showing, which is Desktop Server. Um, so the question I forgot to reiterate the question was just uh, if there is a plugin that I like for um, syncing. Um, one of the other best practices is using the same PHP version as the host. Um, this is easier in some local development um, apps as opposed to others. Um, the reason for this is if you're um, working on something and your local development server has like PHP 7.3 and then you're pushing it to like a host that's running like PHP 5.6, um, hopefully you're not using a server with PHP 5.6 because that one's been completely end of life. But the, I'm finding there are a lot of hosting companies that are still using that. Um, so for security reasons, if your host is on PHP 5.6 or lower, talk to your host and um, figure out if they're providing um, long-term support on that or if 
uh, if you can get moved up. But the reason for that is there are several functions that have been deprecated between 5.6 and 7.3. Um, and actually a couple that have been deprecated even just between like 7.0 and 7.3. Um, and so um, one of the things I'm seeing is I, uh, I manage hundreds of sites on a daily basis um, with my team. And so we see it all. And one of the things we see all the time is somebody you know, has somebody building something for them and says, yep, this is all perfect, this works. They push it to the live server and everything breaks. And it turns out it's because it was being developed on either an old, um, more so I see that where somebody's developing something on an old version of PHP, then they try to push it to the server uh, where some of these functions are no longer available. And uh, so it, things break because now they have to rewrite the program to make sure that it's the right PHP version. So you want to find out what your uh, PHP version of your host is. If you're not um, familiar with using like PHP info um, or other hosting settings, you can usually just contact your host and just ask them, what's my PHP version? Um, and that way, when you're working locally, you can make sure that you're not using two very out of sync versions. Because um, what may work on one may not work on the other. Yeah. Yeah, so the plugins are supposed to say what version of PHP they work with as well. Uh, so if it's in the WordPress repository, it should be listed there uh, what PHP version, what, what the minimum version is. Um, and so that's one easy way to find out. Um, yeah, so the question was, you know, what about like when you've got, um, like he ran into that issue where he had a site that, the host upgraded to PHP 7, and then it took down the site because something was not compatible with PHP 7. And so, um, yeah, your best way to do that is um, if, you're, if your site is up and working, um, or even if you're on PHP um, 5.6 temporarily, if the host will do that, if they'll revert it. Um, there are some PHP compatibility checkers. Uh, I believe WP Engines is still out there. Um, and that one, it'll just check for various versions um, to see, you know, does your theme or do any of your plugins have code in them that cause that will not work in PHP 7 or 717273? Seven, seven, um, and uh, one caveat about that is that those PHP compatibility checkers cannot figure out if something is in a conditional. So if you've got something that says, you know, if this is available then run this code, otherwise don't run it. Um, these PHP compatibility checkers don't have a way to check that, they can't run that logic. So they can't see that like, oh actually this does work with PHP 7, it just has a fallback in the code. So that's just one of the, the little things, yeah. What is this checker? Yeah, I think it's just called PHP compatibility checker, it's just a plugin. plugin. Yeah, yep, in the repository. Um, and last I knew they were still using that. Um, in the latest version of WordPress, we've also got the um, site health, which will warn you about your PHP version as well. Um, that one doesn't have the compatibility checker, but there's also a site health plugin um, that's put together by the WordPress core contributors. Um, and that one does have a really cool feature that's called um, troubleshoot. And it will actually, only for the person who's logged in, it won't affect anybody else. It will deactivate all the plugins and uh, set you back to, um, one of the default themes, so it'll be like 2019 theme, but that doesn't show to the world, and so you can actually then turn them on one by one to see at what point it breaks. So that way you don't have to test those changes on a live site. But the other option is, you know, test that locally. Um, when you're setting up your uh, local server, choose a PHP version that's at least seven, at this point, at least 7.2, because um, 7.0 and 7.1 are now, um, now being phased out. So uh, I'm going to compare a couple of the uh, local server options. So uh, MAMP is one that, despite the M, the first M being Mac, um, it actually does run on Windows. Um, so this is one that's really popular, especially 
um, with people who are not building WordPress sites, which as you've seen probably by the numbers, WordPress is now like almost a third of the web. Um, and so at this point, the number of people not building WordPress sites is getting less and less, unless they're you know, professionals who are um, building like custom built, custom coded sites and they're most likely not using MAMP. They're gonna use one of the other options that I show. Uh, one of the options, one of the pros is that it is free. Uh, MAMP does have a pro version as well. Um, and uh, so the free version does work. It just doesn't have all the features like the ability to give it like a domain name. Instead it does things by IP, um, but it's, it's free. And it is stable. Uh, MAMP is, compared to some of the other options, it is fairly stable. Um, and so that's a great one, especially if you're on a Mac. Um, MAMP works really well and you can just keep running, keep working on it for hours and nothing's gonna break. And it is cross-platform. Version 5 is only available for Mac and version 4 is available for Windows. Uh, it does have some cons though. Um, it does not auto-install WordPress, um, which means that you have to download and install the WordPress files. It also does not auto-create a database for you. You have to go into PHP My Admin and actually create, um, create that database that you want to use, and then, then you can go in there and um, set up your WordPress site. So this makes it a little less user-friendly for WordPress users compared to some of the other options because it requires several extra steps. It's also not easy to change PHP versions. It is possible, but it's not easy. Um, and so that is just not, not a great option for if, you're, if you need to test multiple PHP versions, uh, there are some other options that work much better. Um, so a couple things about using MAMP are um, just that it, um, it has a little weird of an interface and so I'm just going to pull it up real quick. Hey, you have a question in the back? Yeah. Uh huh? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, so with MAMP, um, you just saw that startup process is pretty quick. It's just got it's got the power logo and it says start up my website. Um, and so you've got um, your website, which right now um, I don't have anything running on MAMP, um, but you can access here. Um, you've got some tools. Um, you've got like your PHP info, and that's where I was talking about. Like you can check your PHP version right here at the top. So this one's running on PHP uh, 7.3, um, and it's this is where you've got like the PHP My Admin um, for managing the database. Um, so again, this is stuff that's a little more advanced than what some people are comfortable with. Um, if you use PHP My Admin all the time, you may have no problem with this. Um, but if you really don't feel like creating your own database every time and um, you know and installing the files um, in the right place and going through the um, actual like editing of files of a certain file to choose a different PHP version, this may not be the best option for you. Um, so, but that one, as you can see, fairly simple to get started. You click that, you install it, and then as the first thing you see after it's installed is that. Uh, first page, that first pop-up that I showed where you just press the power button, it says start the server, and, uh, and then it just goes. Uh, they do have a cloud option as well, um, which is, that one's a monthly paid version as opposed to the uh, yearly paid version for MAMP Pro. Um, but that one, it works pretty well. I mean, cloud is nice because, you know, it gives you access to more places than um, just your local one, which you can do with MAMP. You can access your site um, from other places, like within your network. So like if you want to check it on your phone, you just have to do it by IP address um, and then use the right port. Um, so the next one um, is desktop server. This one is really popular in the WordPress world, um, but it does work for non-WordPress as well. Um, so this one is by ServerPress. 
Um, Pro is it, it's free. Um, the free version, they have a free and paid version um, like the others. Um, and so that's always nice. If you want to get started, you're only working on one site or a couple sites, you want to just try it out without paying for it, you can try the free one and you get a whole bunch of features. Um, it really comes only a few features you have to pay for. Um, usually with desktop server, what, you're, what you have to pay for is to get more than three sites. Um, desktop server uh, has built-in local SSL. Um, so that one's great for any time you want to test something um, that requires, you know, you want to check that like HTTPS works. Um, local SSL is fantastic for that and um, really, really necessary. Um, it auto installs WordPress. Uh, that one's clutch. So you, it's just one click. You choose that you want to use that and it will auto install the WordPress site for you. Uh, it does have some cons. Um, the free version is limited to three sites. Um, you can't change the PHP version. Um, technically, that's that's true. There, it, you can hack it to uh, to get different PHP versions, but it's um, it's not built in. Like it's just it's got a PHP version that it's set to, um, and that's what it sticks with. Unless you go in there and you're uh, changing the configurations. So now I'm going to pull up desktop server for you, just so you can see. Again, so far all I've done on this is installed the software. That was it. Um, didn't do any extra setup, so setup is really easy. Um, first thing is it asks, do you want to restart desktop server with privileges? Um, this is because it has to make some changes to your computer. So if you are on a Mac, it's going to make you put in a password. If you're on Windows, that depends on whether you uh, have set up um, the security feature where you have to like approve things by an admin. Um, but then you can start the features. It's got a couple really cool things that they built specifically for themselves, uh, which is an admin color bar. I actually really like this one. If I'm working on testing something locally and I've got the live site, is I can have two tabs or just like side by side of like working on a site and like test it on my local server, test it on the live one. Um, and this changes the admin color bar at the top, so you can change it. It'll like be a different color than the WordPress one, which is really nice because if you're looking really quick and you're doing it back and forth several times, your brain might start to mix them up and you forget like, oh, which one am I? Which which one's local? Which one's the right one? You, um, so with having different colors, it's just a nice cue. They have an airplane mode so that anything that relies on uh, being online, um, it'll. Um, It'll stop those functions so that you don't start getting errors at, because you're disconnected from something. Um, you've got uh, database archive. You've got debug and trace is a huge one when you are fixing um, a, a broken site. You can turn on debug mode on a live site. Problem with that is that also can give away to anybody who might be malicious. Uh, if you put on debug mode live and somebody can see like, oh, there's this error, they might be able to exploit that error. So having a debug and trace to find the errors on local are really nice. It has CLI. So anyone who's uh, using the command line interface for WordPress and knows just how incredibly fast you can do things um, with WP CLI will love this feature. Um, it's amazing. Um, Sean Hooper is not here this week, but he's an Ottawa guy who gives a talk on CLI several times a year, and he can show you how you can do pretty much everything in a WordPress site like 10 times faster just by using CLI. Um, and again, it's got that local SSL. Um, so when you start it up for the first time, it's going to run through this um, the start the services, and then it'll say done, and then you just click next. And uh, if you have a website, it will uh, give you the option in the middle, which is remove or copy or move any of those sites. Um, I wanted to show you what it looks like the first time you load it up. And so you've got um, create a development site. And so this is where it's nice. You get to choose whatever domain name you want for it uh, because it's going to use .dev.cc. Everyone used to use .dev. Uh, then Google decided to buy it because they're Google and they can do whatever they want. And so .dev is no longer a safe one to have because that is potentially an actual real site. Um, so you're going to run into all sorts of, um, of DNS issues if you try that. So they switched over to .dev.cc, but you can change it to whatever you want, um, such as goraptors.dev.cc. 
Um, eight o'clock tomorrow night, everyone watch. They're gonna win game, the next game, um, because Golden State Warriors are overrated. And um, so the one thing about this is, um, right now, it's on the latest version of WordPress, but um, one thing with desktop servers, it does uh, come with whatever version is like at the time that they put out the version of desktop server, and so it can start to get outdated. So one thing to keep in mind is um, when you choose that, you're probably gonna need to update the site as soon as you start it up. Otherwise, you may end up with an out of date version. But you've also got the option. So if you choose the WordPress version, it'll install the database, it'll install WordPress, and you can just get started um, just like you're um, working on your, on your live site where you've installed WordPress. Um, but it also has the blank option, which is really nice if you want to use something else. Um, like I do a lot of presentations where I use uh, reveal.js, and I actually use desktop server for that when I'm testing it out. And so things like that, um, anytime you're building a site that's not WordPress, or you just want to install um, directly from what you have, like maybe you want an older version of WordPress, you can choose the blank version, and then um, it's going to show you right there where your files are. Um, that'll change depending on you know what person it is. You can choose um, different places. So if you want to drop your website somewhere else, you can do that. Um, and one thing I like to do with that is um, sometimes I will drop it in my uh, Dropbox, so that way it's just automatically adding a backup. Same with iCloud uh, or Google Drive. You can drop it right in there, and that way your files are just automatically being backed up to the cloud as you work on them. Um, so then when you just hit create, um, it runs through this thing, and then it's going to tell you that your website is ready to go. So it's, this one uh, has a few more steps. Um, and so uh, right now there's nothing there because I chose the uh, do not install WordPress version just because I didn't feel like going through the whole thing. Um, but other than that, when you're done uh, with that, it'll just give you the option to remove a website again. Um, you can stop the services, which is what I'm going to do because I have one more to show up. So as you can see, uh, MAMP was definitely, of the three that I'm showing today, MAMP was the most difficult to work with in terms of like technical stuff. Desktop has the most number of options, which can be seen as a plus or minus. Um, the, the one minus of that is that you have to go through like several steps to get your WordPress site set up. So the other option to talk about is local by flywheel. So this one is by a hosting company, which makes it a little bit uh, unique, and it does have um, an extra feature in that it's connected to Flywheel. So if you're a Flywheel customer, um, this may be the best option for you. Uh, but again, local by Flywheel is free. Um, and you can change the PHP version. You can also switch between Nginx and Apache. Um, so depending on which, how you want to, like ha what engine you want to use for your site. And you can change your uh, MySQL version. So that's super nice. Um, this really gives you a nice like graphical interface, but it gives you a lot of flexibility. So you can really try and match your live server. And these ones right here, the PHP versions it gives you, the MySQL versions, and jumping between Nginx and Apache, you can match pretty much most, like every of the main hosting companies, you can match whatever your live server has. So if your live server has PHP 7.1, you can change that. If it's running Nginx, uh, you can change that. Um, and same with like the MySQL version, if they're, if they're on 5.5, um, you can move these around. That's really nice, and that's really clutch. If you have a site where there's a potential that what you're working on locally might not work in the live site, if you can match it like you can with Flywheel, uh, it's really just, it eases you because you know that like, yep, you've got the same software behind the scenes running it. So when you push it to live, nothing's gonna break on you, hopefully. I always say hopefully because I can't say nothing's going to break on you. WordPress is always fun like that. Actually, that's all web development. Um, something works fine for six months. You test it over and over. Thank you. And, uh, and then it, you push live and something breaks. So <laughs> I don't want to make any promises. Um, the one thing about local by flywheel is it uses VirtualBox. Um, the one 
somewhat uh, annoying thing like with running that is that uh, it, if you try and run multiple sites, there's a potential that you're going to overload your computer because uh, that can get really resource heavy really quick. If you're running like a, you know like an eight core processor and like 16 or 32 gigs of RAM, uh, have at it. Have open up 10 sites. You should be good. Um, local by flywheel. Um, not I don't want to disparage anyone, but it's been known to be not stable. It'll work fine, like you started up 10 times in a row, and it works fine, and then on number 11, it might not work. It, and all you have to do is just reinstall it. Um, the problem with that is it, you're losing time, and um, you know if you need it in a, in a crunch, like you're about to show somebody, like present the website, there's a chance it may not run. It's been a while since that happened to me, um, where I opened up local by Flywheel, and it, uh, and it just didn't run. But it, it happens, and it's kind of a known thing. You'll see it on Twitter a lot. Uh, but everyone loves to complain on Twitter, so I only kind of take that for what it is. Um, so the last, that's the last one I'm actually going to show you. Um, and so this is what the startup process. Again, this is what it'll look like right when you've installed um, local. Is, um, so right now it's starting the local machine, starting VirtualBox. Uh, so this one takes a little bit longer to actually start up. Um, but it's the easiest to set up. Um, so I find it is, oh, this would be ironic if this was the time it doesn't start, too. <laughs> Starting to question whether it's going to do that. Yeah, I don't have any others running. This could be my fault because I'm, oh, there we go. I was going to say, because I'm jumping between uh, local servers, so I might have just uh, overloaded it a little bit. Um, so, real quick, you've got. Super easy. You don't have a site there. So it'll just tell you straight up. There are a couple things here. You can, this is where you connect it to Flywheel. So if you've got a Flywheel hosting account, you can like pull and push back between that, which is really nice. Um, and so they've got a couple of add-ons. Um, I'm not connected to the internet right now, so I don't have the options. There aren't really anything um, that, that I've ever used anyway. There's only like two add-ons last I checked. Uh, but it's super easy. Create a new site. Um, you can just choose the name. Uh, so go Bruins. Um, and so it gives you a couple of options in the advanced options, but you don't have to use them. Um, so that's like, for example, you can change the domain. Uh, by default, local uses .local, because that one's also currently not a top level domain. Um, I would not count on that though because that seems like something that somebody is going to start selling dot local. Um, so um, don't, don't plan everything based around that, but they'll also let you know um, because when they when everyone had to switch from using dot dev, um, it was fairly painless. Um, they created things in there. You can uh, just like the um, just like desktop server, you can choose where your files go. And you can use a blueprint. Um, in this case, it's a little bit different. You can actually uh, you can create blueprints, which is nice too. So if you are repeatedly spinning up similar sites, um, you can use that within uh, local, which is really nice. Um, so you've got this option, which is the preferred, which is just their default, and they're defaulting to Word uh, to PHP uh, 7.2.9. And they are using, by default, Nginx. They are using Varnish Cache. So that's one thing to keep an eye out for. Um, super easy to clear out, though. Um, and uh, MySQL 5.7. It does give you all these options, though, which is super nice. It goes all the way down to, uh, to PHP 5.2. Uh, please don't build a site on 5.2. You are so going to be hacked. Um, and so it, um, it lets you choose all the way up to 7.2. Um, I believe it'll do 7.2.9 um, is like the, the default. So 7.2.0 is the lowest. So they don't have 7.3 on there yet. Um, but you can jump between Nginx and Apache, which is really nice because uh, if you're running Nginx, most of these other local ones are only going to run Apache. And so. Uh, so to be able to have that, just so you can duplicate it and say for sure, that's so nice. And then you've got uh, MySQL 5.6 and 5.5 as available options for custom. Uh, it's going to default to 5.7. Um, 
this is where it gets super easy um, right away. So rather than you having to go through the normal WordPress install page, um, like you normally do anytime you install WordPress, you can totally just create this and uh, don't use the username admin when actually creating a site. Um, and also I use the password admin. But this is local, so I'm not ever going to put this online. Nobody can ever access it. Um, but those are just a couple things to keep in mind. Always use a very strong, secure password. Don't use any words in it. And never use the username admin, because that's the number one that bots are always trying to hack. You can set up a uh, multi WordPress multi-site install for both subdirectory and subdomain. So this one is really nice. Um, and you can also do that in desktop server. I forgot to mention that. Um, that you can set up uh, multi-site, which is really convenient. I believe multi-site only works in the pro version of desktop server. They're both um, like $100 um, a year for, uh, for MAMP Pro and um, desktop server, so it's not too bad. Um, but this is what you get once you've created the site. It gives you all this information, which is really nice. None of the others um, make it quite this easy. It shows you your PHP version. Um, it gives you the ability to um, change. So if you've like started on one version of PHP, you can actually change it while you're working on the site. Um, and then you just restart it. That's super nice. Nobody else does that. Um, and so that is, oh, it's not going to let me do that right now. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a really nice option. And then very quickly, um, you've got access to your database. They use Adminer. Um, and so that's just a really easy way to manage your database. You've got, again, the local SSL, which is nice. And you've got MailHog. Uh, so this lets you, if you're doing something that sends emails, this actually lets you check those. Um, so that way you can see, like, did the email actually send? Um, that's great when you're dealing with like WooCommerce sites where you need to make sure that all those emails go out properly. Um, and then when you click admin, it will just uh, bring you right to the login. And so as you saw, I didn't have to actually like create anything on the site. It's just there. Um, so that is it for um, local by flywheel. So. Really, that's uh, real quick, just going to mention Docker is like the pro version to use. Um, Docker is fantastic because you can actually perfectly match pretty much any server you want. Um, it does require a lot of setup. Um, so this is one, the reason I'm not showing this, this is one like if you're like a high-end dev, you're building stuff that needs really custom, um, you can run multiple containers easily. So if you're um, using something that is using endpoints, Docker is great for that because you can run both uh, ends of, of whatever software you're setting up. It's difficult to set up and it is unstable at times. Mostly it'll just, it'll uh, overload the site or overload your server depending on what you've got going on. Um, but that's really any time you're running multiple things. So not really going to talk much about Docker, but check it out if you're looking for something that's more robust than those ones. Uh, I think I only have like one minute for questions. Do I have any questions? Yes? Mm -hmm. um, and it does have the ability, to, as long as you have the zip file, you can load up any version of WordPress you want, and you can create a site, you can create a blueprint from that, yep. with all your favorite themes and your favorite plugins already there, and then just use that when you're creating a new site, so it's pretty awesome. The question for you is this, mm -hmm. uh, about a year ago I switched all my PCs from Windows to Linux. Mm -hmm. Um, so for Linux, there are, um, I believe, desktop server. I don't know that they've put it out yet. They they have been working on a on a Linux version. Yeah. Um, last I knew, they were at least it was discussed. I don't know what the status is on that. Um, really, on Linux, I like to use Vagrant personally. Um, yeah, just because in Vagrant, I find, uh, or in Linux, I find that that's the best option. Um, usually, when I'm doing local development. Um, if I'm using a Linux server, it's usually an external one, so I'm, I'm actually running it as an Ubuntu server. Um, so I find that works best, is just to run Ubuntu server when you're working locally. That's just really nice. Um, yeah. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very much. I'll be hanging around all day. 
If you think of any more, just tweet me at Nick Adams TV and use the WC Hamont for the hashtag and I'll keep an eye out.